Welcome to the Seniors Rock Show, presented by the Law Office of Michael Robinson, PC, on News Radio, Wham 1180. The Seniors Rock Show, a lively weekly discussion, shedding a bright light on aging with fun, entertainment, and important info for all adults. Join in with your comments or questions. Call or text 222-1180 or 1-800-295-1180. Now from the News Radio Wham 1180 studio in downtown Rochester, here's your host, Joanna Palvino. And good afternoon, everyone. This is estate planning and elder law attorney, Michael Robinson. And I'm here, as we are every Saturday, with my co-host, Joanna Pelvino, but we are experiencing a few technical difficulties. So Joanna is uh, is here, but we're not able to hear her at the moment. So uh, she will hopefully be joining us shortly. And I'm also joined by our engineer extraordinaire, Matt Wilson, who's going to keep us uh, keep us going here. And it is the the second weekend of the new year. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is predictions. Uh, That's something that uh, people like to do at the beginning of the year. And so we're going to hopefully have some fun with that uh, today. We'll uh, we'll pretend uh, we're Nostradamus or Nostradamuses, Nostradamus I. I'm not sure what the plural is there, but hopefully we'll we'll have some fun with that. And I'm actually going to start out with a prediction about the Buffalo Bills game today. Um, And I'm very excited about this. This is the first time the Bills have hosted a playoff game since 1996. And um, and I think a lot of us here in the in the Western New York area are very optimistic about what might happen today. And so uh, my prediction is that the Bills are going to win um at you know with 11 wins the colts certainly are no slouches but i just don't see any defense in the league able to contain the bills offense right now so i think the bills will put up some points i'm going to uh, predict a score of 31 to 17 uh and that 31 points does include a defensive touchdown i think that uh, i think that the bills will get a pick six off of philip rivers um so anyway looking looking forward to uh, uh, to watching that game today. Um, so we'll talk about predictions. Remember, this is a call-in show. Uh, you can call us at uh, 222-1180 or on the toll-free line, 1-800-295-1180. So, uh, so send us a, uh, or give us a call. Let us know what some of your predictions are for, uh, for the coming year. Um, and, uh, and one of the predictions uh, that I'm going to make uh, has to do with, uh, with where we're going here with, uh, with getting back to some degree of normalcy in our lives. And uh, I think that uh, maybe by the fall, certainly, we're going to start to see some very positive impact of the uh, coronavirus vaccines, at least certainly here in this country. And, uh, and looking forward to next holiday season, looking a little more like what we're used to seeing uh, with the holidays. And that's another, uh, another topic people can uh, call in and talk to us about. How did you spend the holidays this year? Um, it was different for all of us, but people found a lot of creative ways to still have uh, a fun and meaningful holiday celebration um, with their families. And um, so I'd be interested to hear uh, how you came through the holiday season. What were some of the, the creative ways you came up with to, to celebrate? Um, and that's another prediction I have for 2021. It, it, you know, this past year, it was a lot of fun and, and actually gratifying to see all of the different and creative ways people came up with uh, to handle the pandemic, whether it was uh, in a business context, a social context, a lot of challenges presented themselves. Uh, a lot of uh, businesses were put in very difficult positions, certainly people in the entertainment business, uh, uh, as well as music and theater venues suffered. But uh, at the same time, they did come up with ways to continue to uh, to uh, to broadcast performances, to draw people in, and um, and I think we're going to continue to see more of that in 2021. 
Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to see what uh, what people come up with. I know at our law firm, we've continued to look for different ways to uh, to reach out to people and continue to get important information uh, to folks and their families about estate planning issues and uh, and elder law issues. And um, and that actually leads me to our weekly feature, which we call the myths of estate planning. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions out there about estate planning and elder law, and they too often lead to not only financial loss, but heartache for families. So we like to bust those myths. And uh, this week, the myth that, that, uh, that comes up, um, it, it comes up typically when people are staring down long-term care costs. And the myth is, I have too much money to ever qualify for Medicaid. Well, the reality is you can almost always obtain Medicaid eligibility regardless of how much money you have. And the issue, of course, is there are um, asset limits um, in terms of how much money are you allowed to have in order to qualify for Medicaid to cover long-term care expense. But of course, planning is the key um, because with the proper planning and when we do asset transfers and we structure them correctly, uh, we are able to get people qualified for Medicaid to cover their long-term care expense and still preserve all of that money. And I, I can't even tell you the number of clients that we've been able to qualify for Medicaid over the years, many of them with hundreds of thousands of dollars um, in assets. So the reason I, I want to speak to that is so many people unnecessarily spend down their money because they think they can't qualify for Medicaid and they wind up impoverishing themselves or their spouses um, and lose a financial legacy that they have worked all of their lifetime uh, to build. So, um, so I want to dispel that myth. Um, certainly, it's not something that you can do on your own. You're going to need to work with someone who's, who's knowledgeable and experienced in the area, but ask the questions, seek those people out, because again, you can preserve uh, certainly the great majority of your assets, if not all of the assets, and still qualify uh, for Medicaid coverage to pay for those very expensive long-term care costs. And as, uh, as listeners know uh, from past shows uh, at our firm, we present webinars on a regular basis covering a range of estate planning and elder care issues. And uh, qualifying for Medicaid is one of the very important topics that we, uh, that we do cover. So, uh, so feel free to reach out to, to us. You can view those webinars. They are free. <laughs> and we have Joanna back. What is up? Hello, Joanna. Happy Saturday. Hey, I can't hear you. Um, I'm having some technical difficulties, as you can see, and I hear myself. So I'm going to hang up and see if Matt, Mr. Magic can help me get back on the regular way. But Mike, take it away. Thank you. All right, Joanna. Hopefully we get you back here. Uh, hopefully we get you back here soon. So uh, Matt's giving me a thumbs up. He's optimistic that uh, that we're going to have Joanna back online uh, in a uh, in a very short time. So again, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear yep. me? <laughs> All right. I can, but I'm getting an echo too. Um, hold on. So we're going to continue working on that. But again, we would love to hear from listeners uh, about your predictions for 2021. Um, as well as, um, again, coming out of the holidays. How did you do with the holidays? Uh, did you get together with folks? How did you get together with folks? Give us a call at 222-1180 or again, 1-800-295-1180 and, um, and let, us know, let us know how you did. Um, we're gonna talk in the, uh, the next segment about predictions that other people have made. But I also want to, uh, before we go to our first break, talk about the guests that we're going to have on uh, on the show today. Uh, very much looking forward 
to, uh, to uh, having Dan Gein as our guest. Uh, Dan is a physical therapy uh, expert with Genesee Valley Physical Therapy, and he's going to give us some insight uh, in, uh, on a number of uh, topics, but in particular, how to avoid falls, because as, uh, as we do get older, falls become, unfortunately, more and more common. Uh, they become more and more consequential. So looking forward to, uh, to hearing Dan's advice as to how do we prepare ourselves and avoid, avoid the falls and, uh, and avoid the consequences of those falls as well. And uh, just a personal note, I don't know if Dan knows this, but Dan and I went to high school together. Uh, Dan was, uh, was a few years behind me at, at uh, McQuaid, and uh, I haven't seen Dan in over 40 years. Um, so looking forward to hearing from uh, him today and, uh, and catching up as well as, uh, as well as hearing from him about uh, Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. So a bright sunny day here in, uh, in Western New York, a little bit chilly, but it's a great time, a great way to get out and about. And uh, we'll be back in just a few, hopefully with Joanna. Well, good afternoon again, everyone, and welcome back to Seniors Rock Radio. I think the Twilight Zone music is appropriate for, uh, for this afternoon, but Joanna, you are here. Hey, I'm back. Hello, and uh, happy Saturday. I don't know what I missed there, but I have an idea because, of course, I was involved in the agenda, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even though true. I was cut off from the show. But hello, folks, and it's nice to be back. And we had a little uh, help from Magic uh, Matt over here, our producer. Thank you, Matt, for helping out there. And I don't know how those things change, but it's so frustrating to me because I didn't touch anything, and all of a sudden, boom, I can't hear. So it is kind of magic, you know, and these guys keep up with all of this technical stuff. So the producers are very important for our show. Yes, and um, did you finish up the uh, myths of estate planning in the last segment, Mike? I did indeed. Awesome. Okay. Well, I wanted to bring something up today and I don't think you got there yet, but listeners and Mike, I heard on um, someone on the news recently saying that they predicted the pandemic was going to go away in 2022. That's some good news. And we can hope for that. But then they also predicted that when it was over, it would be like the roaring 20s. So, you know, I'm always curious and I know that we're lighthearted and we like to have fun. So I thought, let's check that out and see what it was like in the, 90, in the 1920s, see what it really was like and maybe uh, what it will be like. You know, our predictions, uh, folks, and jo join us in this uh, 2022 20s style. So Mike, you're the smart one. How about you start with some history about uh, the Roaring Twenties? <laughs> well, it certainly was. It was a period of dramatic uh, social and political change in our country, uh, perhaps not unlike uh, the the, uh, the current day. But yeah. uh, some of the things happening, you know, for the first time, more Americans lived in cities than on farms uh, in the 1920s, and uh, that certainly was a, a dramatic cultural and social shift. Um, the economic growth that took place led to a, a new consumer society. And, you know, thanks to, to nationwide advertising, the spread of chain stores began to happen. Uh, people from coast to coast for the first time were purchasing and using the same goods. They were listening to the same music. They did the same dances. Uh, and even slang uh, became common uh, no. coast to coast. I have a question. Did you say coast to coast, you said, right? I did. Yeah, well, that's a big change. What about nowadays? What do you think about nowadays? It's it, way bigger than coast to coast, right, with the internet. Exactly, now it's, a, it's global. Yeah, very interesting. What else? Well, it was, uh, you know, for many people, it was an upsetting time. Uh, they, they didn't like some of these changes and thought it was a bit racy. Uh, but, you know, for, for younger people, in particular in the, in the big cities, uh, the 20s were indeed roaring. Yeah, they, they were having a lot of fun. I know that, you know, whatever small segment it was, because it did have a big influence on culture. And um, I guess in my mind, I like to think about the, uh, the flapper. And uh, that's probably one of the most familiar symbols of the Roaring Twenties. And uh, typically the flapper was a, a young woman, right, with a bobbed haircut. 
not sure what that has to do with anything, but I know haircuts and short skirts were very popular. And uh, I know that things like that, fashion, do have a big influence on, you know, history and things repeat themselves. And um, so if there's a hairdresser out there that can comment on the bobbed hair and what, what that symbolizes, give us a call. Anyway, um, they also drank and they smoked and they said things that might not be thought of as ladylike. And, uh, but in reality, those women in the twenties, most of them did not do these things, but they did like to dress that way. Cause it was a kind of a cool style. Right. And, and they did have a lot to uh, stand up and be proud about because remember in 1920, uh, they finally got the right to vote. Women were able to vote uh, on the 19th amendment uh, to the constitution guaranteed that in 1920. And uh, I think uh, one of the other things that stood out to me, Mike, was that more women were entering the workforce, which also led to less children in the households. And one of the other things I thought was great was that they got a big lift from the drudgery of household work with things like the new things that they got, like washing machines and, are you ready? A vacuum cleaner. They didn't have the robo thing, but they had a vacuum cleaner and that was big for them back in the day. So uh, these are fascinating things to me. And I love, you know, I know you love history too. And um, you know, anything else that stood out to you or, or you think as far as predictions coming up here in the next couple of years when we think about the 20s? Well, you know, I do like the analogy to the Roaring Twenties, and, and I agree. I think that once, you know, once we are really able to get back to, to a degree of normalcy, there's going to be a lot of pent-up energy uh, and excitement that, um, that we're going to see, and I, it, uh, I think it will be a pretty fun and exciting time. I know. I'm I can't looking say. forward to it. I know. You could go dancing outside of your kitchen. How cool would that be? <laughs> that would be good. The neighbors might not like it, but I'll, I'll have fun with it. Well, that's an idea. We could do it in the yard. You know, we could do those things. I know you guys like to do uh, your barbecuing and smoking and all that good stuff. Did you talk about the bills? I missed that because I was uh, I caught off in the... I did talk about the bills. I made a bold prediction uh, on the score. And uh, we'll, uh, I, I put it out there for, for all the world to see. So we'll... Uh, <laughs> I'm on the hook for that one now. Well, tell me, because some of the listeners might have just tuned in. What was the prediction? Sure. I predicted a, a Bills win 31 to 17. Um, and uh, that 31 points, as I said, I think there's going to be a defensive score involved. And uh, I just think the Bills are going to roll today. Cool. And what time is the kickoff? It's a 105 kickoff and the weather looks fantastic. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, for uh, for either team. So uh, I just hope it's a good game, but I hope it's not a close game. Well, the sun's shining out there, so that's a good sign. And I don't know, I think everything that's happening today, uh, you know, we, I got back into the show. It, it's all good. Matt's with us um, and, and Pam is up in the Adirondacks having a good time. So I'm jealous about that, but I'm also really happy that Matt's here with us and that he helped me out and um, it, it's great to hear him on our show. I, you probably have heard him on the news too. He's on Wham during the week, and uh, if you just tuned in, you are listening to uh, Wham 1180, and we're also available on uh, the iHeart Radio app. And so you can take us with you if you are traveling. Maybe someday you'll get to go to the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's There's what, 6,700 people. 6, people there today. I guess maybe just a little bit more than that. Uh, I hope that works out well. Uh, well I'm going to check uh, it out myself. You know I don't watch this, the games, uh, generally speaking, but I'm going to take a peek today for sure. Yeah, that's. I think, uh, I think a lot of folks in western New York are going to be glued to their TVs today. All right, cool. Now, uh, I hope you mentioned earlier maybe that we have a guest today because when we, uh, we're going to go to break in a minute here, but I, I am excited about having uh, Dan Geem here uh, from the Genesee Valley Physical Therapy Group. He's one of the owners, and uh, I understand he's a great speaker. He does a lot of that out in the uh, community, and uh, we're going to be able to give him the opportunity to reach people today without driving around, so he's missing that, and uh I'm glad that we can open the mics for him and he can go to your homes. And if you have questions, folks, he, you know, Mike's here, Dan's here. And uh, I understand they have a little something in, in the past in common. We'll let Mike bring that up. But uh, <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Please call. Do you have questions about falls or maybe helping an elderly loved one and, uh, you know, how you can help them to uh, have better balance? 
you know, give Dan a call in the next segment. So stay tuned. Don't go away. We'll be right back on the Seniors Rock Show. In these uncertain times, we're all concerned with protecting our family's legacy and hard-earned assets from nursing home costs, unnecessary taxes, and the expense and delay of probate. At the Law Office of Michael Robinson, PC, we've spent over 34 years helping families just like yours preserve their wealth and leave a lasting legacy for those they love. Register for a free educational webinar to learn how you can protect you and your family. mrobinsonlaw.com. That's mrobinsonlaw.com. Do what you love, we'll help you get there. Jealousy Valley Physical Therapy. Hi, I'm Dan Gein, physical therapist and owner of Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. And daily, I'm so humbled by the great reviews we get from our patients, like this one. I'm John. I'm a professional firefighter, a scuba diver, a musician, and a granddad. Firefighters are industrial athletes, and over my 26 years at it, I've had opportunity to injure myself a lot. I really can't say thank you enough to Genesee Valley Physical Therapy for making sure I can get out there and keep living life. Thanks for the great review, John. And folks, please remember, you don't need a referral to see us, and we adhere to strict CDC guidelines and even offer telehealth visits if you prefer. Call us or visit GeneseeValleyPT.com today. There's a convenient location near you, including our newest location in Pittsburgh at the Bushnell Basin Office Building. Do what you love, we'll help you get there. Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. Uh, he's an attorney and he is my co-host and he uh, specializes in estate planning and elder law. So we always bring experts on the show and you are welcome to call us anytime, 585-222-1180 if you have a question while we're chatting. And I'm proud today to have another uh, expert on the show and uh, his he is a physical therapist. His name is Dan Gein and he's with Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. Uh, you may have noticed that Genesee Valley Physical Therapy is on the air now with us and they are a new sponsor. We're so excited to have them join us. And they'll be here on a regular basis, which is cool because you're going to learn a lot uh, about things that they do in therapy to help all of us. And um, there's some interesting things happening and it's always changing. So um, tell you a little bit about the company. Physical therapists Dan Gein and Ryan Healy are the owners of Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. But um, since they're remote, um, we're just having uh, Dan join us today. And we'll have Ryan back another time uh, or have, us, have him join us. Uh, Dan Gein has been practicing orthopedic physical therapy and providing rehab services for over 30 years at Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. And uh, you might recognize his name as a public speaker because he travels a lot and he's an educator. Um, and we understand, as I said earlier, that he's really missing traveling on the road and seeing everyone in person. Uh, but, you know, the COVID halted that. So no worries, Dan. We're reaching thousands of people today from the comfort of wherever you are. And uh, right now I'm going to welcome you, Dan Gear, to the Seniors Rock Show. How are you? I'm great, Joanna. Thanks so much for having me in. And Michael, hello to you as well. Hello, Dan. You did recognize the name then, huh? I did recognize the name, yes. Well, tell the listeners right. how you know, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Joanna Pelvino. Excuse me. I, I know Michael only because I'm a listener of the show. I haven't met Michael personally. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Joanna, your last name's familiar to me because I'm not sure if you had a relative that went to McQuaid, but uh, there was a Mark Calvino that I went to McQuaid with years ago. Yeah. 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 Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. Mark, Mark is our cousin, my cousin through marriage. And uh, Jack is my father-in-law. And, uh, but I think you might know Mike Robinson too, because he also went to McQuaid. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a Mike yeah. Robinson you went to McQuaid with. <laughs> Mike, when were you there? When did you get out? I was, I was three years ahead of you, I believe. I, I graduated in 78. Got it. All right. Yes. I was, uh, it was a, 78 was a great class. Really, really good bunch of guys. I see them from time to time. I've got a, a couple boys that are at McQuaid now. So, uh, I still make regular visits over there, so uh, I'm still connected there as well. Wonderful. And I'm going to note when you say a couple of boys, I understand you have eight children. Is that right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's I'm awesome. Of, well, yeah, I'm one of, a, one of those throwback families, I think, from the 1950s that had a bunch of kids. So I, uh, I came from one. I was one of seven, and I wanted to one-up my parents, so I, I had eight. <laughs> but... But, you know, the, the key 
key there, Joanna, you know, it, it always comes down to my, my wife, right? So anyone who can uh, is open to having eight children is a saint right there by default. Absolutely. Bless her. Absolutely. And that yeah. is such a, I love that because, you know, I miss seeing those big families. And when I see them, it makes me smile because I remember, you know, growing up on the street with, you know, families with 10 people, you know, 10 kids, eight kids, yeah. five kids, very common yeah. back then. And uh, yeah, it, so, was, it was very, yeah. common. we're very blessed. Uh, we got, I've got four that are out of college, all working, being are all taxpayers, so that's good. And I got two that are in college and two in high school, so we're we're moving slowly towards that, uh, towards the end game at some point. Wow, it's like a couple of each. It's like Noah's Ark, huh? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I am so happy to have you on board, and thank you for being a sponsor and uh, supporting the show. We really uh, enjoy bringing uh, people like you and experts to uh, families that are dealing with aging and dealing with all kinds of different things. And with what you do, uh, there's all different things we're going to learn. And I'll have to have you back several times because you do have so many great services. But let's focus today, Dan. Um, we know that, uh, you know, COVID has uh, made a difference and that you um, have to, you know, change some things and make sure, you know, to make sure that it's the safest environment possible for the patients and, of course, for the folks that you work with. So I understand you're open. My question is, are you considered an essential business? Yes, we are. You know, it's funny. When this whole thing came around, it was so fluid. Uh, we're, we're an outpatient service. And so there was always just a little bit of hesitation whether we were considered one. And But to our patients, we're considered essential. We see a lot of people post-surgery, uh, a lot of people in chronic pain, and, uh, you know, they need us. And so, uh, luckily, the government agreed that we were essential services. So uh, we never closed. So we were, we're very fortunate to uh, to plug away. There's a lot of there's a lot of hardship out there for people, but we're, we're very fortunate. Yes. Oh. Well, that's good news because I know uh, physical therapy can be a godsend for so many people. I've been uh, through it, and and I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm I'd le- I want to take a tour of this new place that you have uh, out. In, I think it's Bushnell's Basin. You have aqua therapy. That sounds so fascinating. I just want to visit to see it. Sure. Well, yeah, we actually um, have uh, aquatic therapy around the county. Um, we've we we uh, got together with the Y maybe 14 years ago and have access. Now, lately, COVID uh, slowed that down, so our access is not as great as it was. But we have um, access to several Ys and the Parenting Rec Center. We use their pool, and then we pay for our patients to have a free membership while they're rehabbing there, not only for the days that they go for their rehab, but they also can go on their off days to implement uh, what we give them to do on their own. And the, the, the water environment's great for people because you, you weigh a little less in the water, and it's easier to to tolerate a strengthening program, a flexibility program. So it's a it's a neat it's a neat niche for us. Yeah. What a great partnership. I love that. That's great. And I know you have seven locations now, is that correct? Yeah, we do. Seven locations. Uh, we started in nineteen eighty seven on the west side in Gates with one with my founding partner Bill Jackson who uh, who retired a couple of years ago. And uh, we've grown a lot in the last couple of years just because of the need and, and we've got some really talented therapists that allow us to sort of service the whole area now. All right, great. Now, I know we're going to, we, I've got a couple other questions, and I do love sure. your uh, mission that's on the website. It says, do what you love will help you get there. And uh, that's basically okay. you know, make, keeping it simple. But um, you talk about some serious things, and one of them today is balance and falls. And wondering if you have any tips for the folks um, about, you know, timing. You know, it's good timing now with the snow and the ice coming. Is there anything that you can tell folks to do at home, sure. maybe to prepare them? Well, yeah, I think so. You know, again, I'll I'll rely on your guidance through this exchange. But um, you know, the first thing I think is try to educate people uh, to, uh, to 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 what's involved. And you know, statistically, we all hear about uh, you know falls, but you may not the statistics may not ring home as powerfully as they are. Um, you know, one mm-hmm. out of every four Americans, 65 or older, fall each year. Um, every 11 seconds, an older adult um, is treated in an emergency room for a fall. Every 20 minutes, an older adult dies from a fall. So you're looking at 2.8 million emergency room visits annually, um, 800,000 hospitalizations, and 27,000 deaths every year wow. from falls. And wow, and I know when it happens when you're older, it can be a very, very tough time. We, it happened in our family, and uh, you know, it, it meant that Grammy couldn't go back to her home. She had to move into another place. I mean, that was just a, an, an amazing, uh, you know, trans, 
uh, events that happen just because of a fall. And we've got about another minute left here. So uh, Dan, we're gonna have you back as I said, but I wanted to find out, there's one other really important question. And, and I said, you know, yeah. things people can do at home. I know you have videos on your website at uh, geneseevalleypt.com. And I've seen yeah. the ones that are like, help you with your back pain and that kind of thing. So um, I think all of those stretching kind of videos that uh, folks could access might help them to do it at home. And if they can't, they should come and see you. But I wanted you to tell us about this referral business. Um, they don't have to have a referral from a primary doctor. Is that correct? Right. The laws in New York State changed uh, several years ago. That's called direct access. So, you know, so one of the requirements now for physical therapists is they have to have a doctorate of physical therapy in order to provide care uh, to get their license. So that that raises the bar of education. So now what happens is um, therapists are allowed to see people directly uh, in their clinic without seeing a doctor first. The, the chain that of is great. Is that is great news. I don't want to interrupt you, but we are getting the music, which means we have to go to break. But thank you so much, Dan, for joining us. I'll look forward to the next time you're on, and uh, maybe we'll get some folks to call and ask some questions. But um, I'll look forward to that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Michael. Hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, and GeneseeValleyPT.com, folks. Go check it out. They've got great stuff. For over 34 years, the Law Office of Michael Robinson, P.C. has helped families protect their hard-earned wealth from nursing home expense, probate, and taxes. Visit us online to register for our free educational webinar to learn how you can protect you and your family. M. Robinson. Show on News Leader Wham 1180. And it's a Bills, Bills, Bills day today. I'm uh, getting the excitement myself, and I don't even watch. But um, it, it's infectious. And uh, I wanted to say thanks again to Dan Gein from Genesee Valley Physical Therapy for joining us today. And if you guys are out there, like, breaking tables or doing uh, high fives that are too high and you hurt yourselves, you know where to go now, right? Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. And, um, Mike, it's been a great show. We're in the last part of the, uh, the show now. And... I, you know, you always have such uh, prophetic things to talk about. And I was wondering if you have anything to share with us. It's been quite a week, and um, you know what I'm talking about. You want to make any comments for us? Yeah, sure. And, you know, we, we do like to have fun on the show, and, and having fun is important. And by the way, I'm really looking forward to having uh, Genesee Valley Physical Therapy as a sponsor. Uh, you know, we see it with our clients as we age, strength and flexibility just become so important. So uh, I think that's going to be a, a great addition. But yeah, I, I do feel a need to address the assault on the Capitol that took place this, this past Wednesday. It was profoundly disturbing. And my heart goes out to, and, and my prayers go out to, the family and friends of the five people who died as a result of the attack. And you know, although what happened Wednesday took place in a political context, it is not about politics. Rather, what we saw is the natural, logical, and utterly predictable consequence of dehumanizing and demonizing people who we view as different or with whom we disagree. And if we continue on that path, we're going to see more of the same. You know, the truth is, Despite our differences, we share much more in common with one another. We're all in this thing called life together. And as Ram Das so beautifully said, we're all just walking each other home. If we focus more on our commonalities than on our differences, not only can we avoid the sorts of events that we saw in Washington on Wednesday, we can accomplish great things. And, and so that is our challenge. And to end on a positive note, which we like to do on this show, I am confident that we will rise to that challenge. That is beautifully said, Mike. You really, um, it, that touches my heart and it really wraps up the way this week has gone because I think, you know, like you said, we just all want to go forward, be healed. Um, we've been through a lot and, uh, this past week was terrible. And like you said, let's go forward and uh, band together like we are with everything else. So if you just tuned in, this is the Seniors Rock Radio Show. And uh, that was my co-host, Attorney Michael Robinson of the law firm of Michael Robinson, PC. We are here every Saturday uh, from noon till one. So 
Um, I'd like to thank uh, our sponsors because we're here because of their support and they're very caring people like Mike and like uh, Dan, who was here with us today. Um, so please join us again uh, any Saturday or every Saturday. Tell your friends. And um, there's uh, if there's anything you want to talk about, you can reach us by going to SeniorsRockRadio.com. And uh, you can also reach Mike by going to mrobinsonlaw.com. And uh, boy, Mike, there's not much else I can say today, I except for good luck with your uh, prediction and uh, for the bills. I'm hoping that comes true for you and for my father-in-law and my husband and, you know, so many other people in my family that are already in their uh, blue and white or blue and red, I say, outfits. And John yells at me, no uniforms, whatever they are having fun and uh, enjoying themselves. So be safe today, guys. Be smart. And uh, there's not much else I can say. Yeah, well, I will tell you, I do have a stake in the game today. I have a very good friend who lives in Indianapolis. And in fact, he's a season's uh, ticket holder with the Colts. And so we have a wager. Uh, if, uh, If for some bizarre reason the Colts happen to win today, uh, I'm sending him 50 hot buffalo wings. (laughs) <laughs> and um, and in the more likely event that the Bills win today, he's sending me shrimp cocktail from St. Elmo Steakhouse, uh, cool. which if you if you haven't been there, if you get a chance, if you're in Indianapolis, <laughs> what a fabulous restaurant. Uh, and they're, they're well known. They're famous for their shrimp cocktail. But everything about the restaurant is fantastic. Whoa, never been there. But thanks for sharing. If I ever do get out of this house. I'll check it out if I'm in that area. And it looks like Matt, you're getting him hungry over there. He's saying nice with big exclamation points. Hey, Matt, do you have any predictions for the game? Do you want to share? Or do you have any big, uh, you know, big wagers like Mike? (laughs) Uh, No big wagers, uh, but I do think the Bills are going to come on top. Uh, I'm not sure about the score. It depends on what kind of uh, day Josh Allen has. But I think that we're going to see a win today. And my Raiders are gone anyways, so I am definitely all in for the Bills now. (laughs) <laughs> that's awesome and i'm uh what do they call the fans like me the uh what do they call part-time fans yeah well yeah <laughs> you know front runners i don't know there's some other kind of word that my husband uses but you know why not wagon, it's, yes. uh, we all need a little distraction and uh this is a great day to have one so i know mike's probably running out of his office right now towards the television set because 105 is the big kickoff time and uh, i thank you listeners for joining us today And Mike really wrapped it up by giving us that um, beautiful uh, cap, you know, uh, recap of the week and um, putting us on the right path again to uh, being positive and looking forward uh, to being together in no matter what way it is, if it's, you know, virtually or in person or on the phone or through a letter. So reach out, enjoy yourselves, folks, be safe. And um, I can't think of anything else to say except... Go Bills and Seniors Rock.